Hello everyone. My name is Dheeraj Lal and I welcome you to this business continuity podcast brought to you by Continuity and Resilience. I am today in conversation with the Canada-based Denny Goulet, who has had an impressive and thoroughly enjoyable international career spanning 32 years. He is now the editor of the Residence Post, a website he's created with the goal to focus on the perspective of experts in different fields related to resilience. Denny's ability to bring people together is legendary. He received a BCI achievement award in 2012 for running the most successful business continuity related LinkedIn group, Resix, which is the current name, and now has more than 15,000 members. Denny was the founding leader of the BCI Quebec Forum and served on the BC Management International Benchmarking Advisory Board for 7 years. He has also contributed to the BCM community as a member of the board of directors of DRI Montreal and DRI Canada. In this podcast, Denny gives us a whole range of fascinating insights. He strongly believes that resilience can help you do better and after a crisis not just survive but even thrive. He gives us a wonderful example of how the chief resilience officer of a city in Netherlands managed to bring together the three types of resilience: organizational resilience, personal resilience, and community resilience with long-term benefits for all. He ends with the prophetic note that resilience will grow and will become a must-have for all. Let's hear what Denny has to say. Denny Gure, welcome to BCM with friends and thank you so much. You are a stalwart. You've been in the BCM domain a huge number of years. Tell us about your journey. How did you enter the BCM field? Well, thank you for for inviting me. I started as an analyst in the bank in Canada um 32 years ago. So that's been a while. It was infosec analyst, information security analyst. So it was uh, all IT stuff in, in all this. And at some point the CIO asked me to develop a DR plan for uh, for the bank. At, at at the time, it was quite new uh to to so that CIO was was a little bit ahead of its time well, it went well okay we did some development testing and all that and it all worked well uh and then after that I went to different jobs um became BCM manager BCM consultant uh, moved from company to to other for a while uh, acquired um uh, um a lot of uh, experience uh, technical and business uh experience about BCM and then uh just before white to care decided to go on my own and uh, form my own organization uh for those of you who do not know what white to care is is uh, is is when we went to uh, uh January 1st 2000 and when the, all the computers of the world were supposed to stop and and all that um and then I started to do some BCM training in 2002 so I've been doing BCM training for quite a while um uh starting at that point I did offer uh, consulting and training internationally uh until 2019 where I decided to close my company and go into semi retirement. Hey, it's about time to get some rest. Okay. Yeah. Um uh now I'm the editor of the Resilience Post um and the goal of the Resilience Post is to um share perspective from experts on resilience. So I try to gather information from uh coerce and convince people to contribute and and share their experience and knowledge. Uh, it was an international career that I had so that was the fun part of it. Uh the traveling, the meeting of people, uh the uh different point of views, the ability to discover and to see other uh point of views. That's what I've liked a lot in my career. So sounds as if it's been fun. What do you think makes a good BCM manager? A good BCM manager uh, to me is someone who will be curious and open uh open to learn um the say the saying that uh, uh we've done this like this for the last, for 30 years is not a good answer okay is how does it work okay why does it work like that why is it different here than other at the other place okay what what makes this organization unique and obviously how can i contribute as a bcm manager so the bcm manager is out there um uh, curious open and very communicative okay the bcm manager who who spends too much time in his office her office is not a very good one with this you will learn a lot about organization 
uh, how they work. Um, if you go as a consultant, uh, you will learn uh, the same thing, but compounded by the fact that it's different organization, different organization type. And if you have a chance to work uh, internationally, then you see cultures that yeah. start to blend in all this because uh, ECM is not seen the same way everywhere. I even work with a champagne producing company. <laughs> Just to tell you, they need BCM too. So the, the BCM manager uh, needs to be out there. And I the think. BCM manager is probably in the fortunate position of having a bird's eye view and having access perhaps to a lot of information other people don't. So it could be a pretty strategic resource for the organization. It's an interesting job uh, because you get to know everyone. Um, you, you get to talk to the specialists, you get to talk to the managers, you get to talk to senior manager uh, in, in that kind of job uh, uh, as a BCM manager. So it gives you a wide range of views and understanding. It kind of puts you in a very unique position about this organization as you understand a lot that most people don't. <laughs> okay. And if you've got that gift of translating from business to technology to uh, translating language and, and, and communication for that, all the best, all the better. Great, thank you. Okay. You started off with InfoSec, you went into continuity and you now run the Resilience Post. Tell us about this progression and importantly, how does organization resilience bring it all together and maybe is, is the next peak for many organizations to climb? Well, that's a very uh, long-winded question for... Uh, you see, you see we, we just had an hour for this. <laughs> so actually, as I moved along in my career, uh, I started to notice a few things. Um, other professions uh, were trying to take over or hijack uh, BCM uh, and, and integrate it in theirs. Okay. Well, it started with IT and InfoSec. Uh, they first claimed that DR was part of IT. And because, well, the R was technical, and I guess at some point it, it did make some sense, but that didn't work well when it became clear that BCM was not a technology issue, but more of a business issue. So it, it kind of uh, um, showed that BCM had to move out of the IT world, okay? DR, disaster recovery, or uh, the, the, what I call the uh, technical flavor of BCM, um, it's okay. Uh, I mean, they're the expert. IT is the expert. So they're, they're, that's right. Then risk management also claim ownership, okay? Um, saying, well, it's about risk management. And uh, interestingly, I met a risk manager who refused to put in the risk register all the risks that were low probability. And guess what? BCM falls into this big time, okay? It's always low probability of, of disruption uh, that, that you have. Uh, so, so it was an interesting debate that we had that ended up in the, in the CEO's desk. And then, uh, well, actually I won <laughs> because uh, the CEO looked at the risk manager and said, I want everything on that risk. Risk management, to me, it was not the right place also. So where was that? Uh, under the CFO? Oh, that's bad because the CFO wants to cut costs and make profits. So where do you put BCM? And then it became clear that uh, at the same time that BCM was important enough to stand on its own. And it came, it came to be clear that uh, resilience was it, okay? Uh, we had to move into resilience and BCM was part of it as risk management, as other uh, profession, felt, felt, felt very well in a good place there. So it came to a point where there was talk about creating a job of uh, chief resilience officer, okay, and instead of uh, a poor uh, chief risk manager, to put chief risk officer or chief other officer, the chief resilience officer would take an, a nice seat at the table there and would be able to oversee BCM risk, security, and, and uh, give uh, uh, one person a chance to present to top manager the balance view not just uh, from my little world of risk management or, or cybersecurity or, or this or that. So to me, the creation of a chief resilience officer uh, approach is the right approach. Uh, it's been happening in, in organization, more and more organization, there's a trend, okay? Uh, a lot of it was done in uh, uh, cities, 
cities like uh, Boston, New York, Toronto, London, uh, 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 and, and Tokyo, and, and uh, all over the world, okay? There was a uh, chief resident officer, um, over 100. Oh. And then their role was to tie everything up together, mm. okay? All the needs that, a good example, uh, they needed to, to build a dike, okay, in a city. Okay, just a little bit more, you can have a cycle path. Uh, this is the place, they had a problem with uh, flooding. They also had a problem with uh, parking space in the city. And then they also had a problem with green space in the city, which was insufficient. Guess what they did? They uh, carved out in the city a nice park, okay, under which there was parking space. And at the bottom of it, there was a reception uh, place for the excess water coming in. Nice. You see, just one solution that covers all these aspects. And that's what the chief president's officer does. Okay. So you could have something similar in organizations also. Uh, and I thought it was, that's just neat. That's kind of neat. That's kind of nice to, to, to have this kind of thinking and putting all these things together instead of everyone working on their little project on, on, and fighting for budgets uh, with one another. We're not putting it all together. And they actually save money because they were doing it at all the same time. Okay. So there's a lot of good reasons to take that approach of the chief resilience officer. I'd say there are organizations who probably did not have much preparedness or seriousness, kind of managed, uh, got somewhere. If those organizations now want to do something more formal, more structured, more sustainable, what would you suggest they should go about doing and how? Well, they, they, they should try to start to uh, look at resilience and understand what resilience is, okay? Um, res resilience is not just about me as an organization. It's about me within something. It's about me with something, okay? To me, uh, uh, re uh, organizational resilience um, uh, is only one type of resilience. Okay? It is... Uh, there is also personal resilience okay, and community resilience. Um, those three types of resilience are interrelated in a very complex relationship. But they are, okay? Uh, make no mistake about it, okay? If, how can you uh, have organizational resilience if your people are not resilient, okay? If you have, are an organization, um, uh, that is within a community and detached from the community. How can you afford to, how can you say your resilience? Community has to be resilient too. Okay. And, and when I'm talking about community, I'm not talking about the village, although it could be the village, but it's the city, it's the province, it's the state, it's the country. Okay, that's the community. Uh, and even some community are uh, across boundaries and, and do not don't take understand what boundaries are, so different type of community also. What you need to do is to um, help with the resilience of your own people, help with the resilience of the community, work with them, okay? Um, I've seen a city where they were building a dike and an organization uh, uh, lent uh, engineers to help them with the dike. They did not send people to dig and to, but they provided free of charge engineers. And you know what? That dike will prevent flooding that would affect the company. Okay, it makes sense, okay? If you are to start, start small and grow, obviously, don't buy a software package that tells you, <laughs> take the boxes and then after three days of taking boxes, you will be resilient. That's not, that's not true. That doesn't work like that. Especially when you start with something new, start small and grow, okay? Um, uh, find out how much dependent you are on your community. Find out how much dependent you are on your people in your organization, okay? That's the first thing you need to do. Uh, find out what are the, uh, get a good understanding of your organization. What are the goals of the organization? What does it exist? What's important for the organization? Uh, those are things that are so important. Very often people go about their day, but they, they do. They don't ask. They don't question. They just do. Okay? They repeat. Do and repeat, do and repeat, do and repeat. And 
you lose track of what's important when you do that. Right. Okay? Stop and start small, understand where you stand, understand where you're going with this organization, and understand how dependent you are. This will uh, uh, tell you where you need to work. Your employees need to be more empowered. Maybe that's what will make them happy, okay? And so trust them. And well, guess what? If you don't trust them, why did you hire them anyway? This uh, company in the Netherlands, they gave 100 euros uh, to employees to buy a bicycle, those in living within five kilometers. In exchange, they had to abandon their parking spot at the office, you see? <laughs> so <clears throat> healthier employees, because they were doing exercise, the company was saving money, okay? At the end of the day, that's a good, that's a good point of resilience, okay? And, and uh, uh, free bus passes in the hotels for customers in Switzerland. You go there and it was floored. I mean, I paid for my room and they gave me uh, keys and bus passes. And bus passes for what? Well, to go to the city, wherever you want. And so on and so on and so on. So it's BCM, risk management, security, crisis management, those are big parts of resilience. It's a given, they have to be there. But also, you need to bring also health and safety, environment, quality, ethics. This has to be there, governance, privacy, social responsibility, and many other subjects. Resilience is, is big, resilience is, is wide. But resilience needs to cover a lot of subjects. And this is what I'm trying to do with the Resilience Post, by the way. Okay, trying to get experts in all those fields and to talk about personal resilience, to talk about community resilience. If you see good thing happening, I mean, it, it gives you a, 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 an incentive to try to do that. Especially if, if as an organization, all of this is a very good and I'm going to save money. Why not? I would be stupid to not, do, not look into this as an organization. Uh, I think resilience is going to grow a little bit like BCM did in the 1990s, where more and more people understood that it was not a technical thing, but it was a business thing, and it grew, okay? Um, uh, and then resilience will, uh, will have more and more fans <laughs> and, and participants, and there will be more stories to tell of, of success, successful implementation of resilience, I'm sorry. Okay, so to the point where today, when, when a, an organization uh, wants to buy a service or product from a vendor, they ask about their BCM capability, don't they? Well, they will ask about their resilience capability at some point. It will become a must have, sometimes being coerced by your customers to, to have it, but it doesn't matter, really. Uh, the important is to get it. So to me, resilience will become, it, it's more than just, it's not a fad. It's something that will become uh, um, a must-have, a uh, logical thing that needs to be had by an organization. Having your chief resilience officer or someone in charge of that would be extremely helpful to, to achieve that. But at the end of the day, um, uh, uh, if you don't have that, well, you will disappear as an organization. So it's a must have. That's it. Fair point. <laughs> On that note, thank you so much, Denny. I loved the points about the chief residence officer and about the three pillars. And I hope some people take inspiration from what you've said about resilience and make it happen sooner rather than later. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Okay.